Well, Scholar Rock holding on to gain since reporting that its spinal muscular atrophy drug helped patients on Eli Lilly ZepBound reduce muscle loss, a known risk factor, factor tied to GLP-1 obesity drugs. The drug is still in mid-stage trials for weight loss, but currently under FDA priority review to treat SMA, a genetic muscle-wasting disease. Joining us now to dig into the results is Scholar Rock CEO David Halal. David, great to have you with us. Great to be with you, Melissa. Um, so walk us through the data, because this is very interesting. At 24 weeks, the combination led to less overall weight loss, but the weight loss was, quote unquote, higher quality, less muscle loss. Yeah. Um, so at Scholar Rock, as the uh, world's leaders in myostatin biology and proving what we could do by stimulating muscle growth in children and adults suffering with spinal muscular atrophy, <clears throat> we had a hypothesis. And uh, that hypothesis was that given the fact that GLP-1s have made so much meaningful benefits in the lives of patients, one of the blemishes is obviously somewhere between 25% upwards to 40% of the weight loss happens to be really valuable lean mass loss. And so that we said to ourselves as the world leaders in this space, what can we do? It's our obligation to understand what kind of benefits we could have for patients. And so we designed this trial where patients received uh, either terzepatide alone or epitogramab with terzepatide. And what we saw in just 24 short weeks, some pretty remarkable data. Um, the primary analysis demonstrated lean mass preservation of 54%. That was a p-value equal to 0 0.001. Secondly, as you noted, uh, not only did uh, patients lose uh, uh, less muscle, they also lost slightly more fat. Mm -hmm. The overall weight loss was pretty similar, but importantly, as you said, the quality of that weight loss. So it went from 70% fat mass, 30% lean mass, to on our therapy, 85% fat mass was the lost weight, mm -hmm. and only 15% was lean muscle mass. So this is really interesting data, but at the same time, at the same conference, Lilly also released its own data for, I would say, its version of this sort of add-on um, by Magrumab, yeah. <laughs> and that was also phase two, and it also showed that uh, for patients taking terzepatide plus this other drug, that, that they were able to have higher quality weight loss. So how do you see yourself fitting into this market once, if it does reach commercialization? Sure. It's a great question. Um, our core at Scholar Rock has been to be the world leaders, not only in myostatin biology, but really focusing on children and adults with these devastating rare neuromuscular disorders. And uh, as you noted at the uh, front part of this segment, we're so excited uh, that our application is being reviewed by the FDA under priority review for patients with spinal muscular atrophy. Mm -hmm. We're also looking beyond spinal muscular atro atrophy at additional rare, severe, and devastating neuromuscular disorders, and we'll be updating the world on those plans later on this year. As it relates to this space, with you know, Lilly being a, a real leaders, uh, obviously with terzepatide and, and now with, uh, with that uh, muscle-preserving approach, I guess the way we take a step back, and, and during our investor call last week, we said, whether or not it's our place to do those longer, larger trials that will be needed on a path to commercialization, if that is not our place, maybe we take a step back and, and think about what approaches we can take. I will say this, though, Melissa, this is such a massive market. I mean, some analysts today were saying this muscle-preserving market in the obesity space alone may be worth $30 billion. Um, so I don't think it's a winner-take-all uh, in, in this market. I think you have Lilly and you have other companies. Uh -huh. You have us that is doing something really, really uniquely with exquisite selectivity to myostatin and safety that we think that platform in and of itself will have a role in the space.